It's about three miles. Three miles is what you'd get if you're trying to transmit between two of these radios. Three miles. There's the short answer. If that's all you need to get on with your day, maybe go back to watching the Not a Rubicon videos. But if you'd like to know more about why it's three miles and why that is a huge variable, stick around. All right, so get ready. One of the most complicated questions to answer in amateur radio is, how far does this transmit? <laughs> how far do two of these transmit when they're talking? How far is it from one of these to a repeater that's on a hill? How far, how far, how far, right? It's the most important question, but it's the most variable-laden answer in radio, not just ham radio, in radio, because the answer is predicated on where in space, either on Earth or in space, this thing is. Also, what antenna is on this thing? If you're using the stock antenna, it's not very good. It's not gonna transmit very far, but if you upgrade it, maybe you have a radio like this with a aftermarket quarter wave vertical antenna, this is gonna perform a lot better than its little rubber ducky counterpart. By the way, I have a whole series of videos testing antennas like these, not just handhelds, but mobile antennas that would go in a car, right? So once you get around the concept of this thing transmits, the question then becomes is, well, where I'm transmitting from is the most important question or variable in this situation. And why is that? Well, this radio, just starting out with a Baofeng, transmits on two meters and 70 centimeters which is roughly around the 140-ish megahertz range and the 446 megahertz range. In a practical sense, the physical wavelength of that radio frequency is 2 meters or 70 centimeters. That's why we call it the name of literally the length of the wave. These radio waves, they want to just fly in open air, what we call line of sight communication. So if I have a Baofeng and I have another radio and they are looking straight at each other with nothing around them, no buildings, no vegetation, no anything. And all we do is just take them further and further apart from each other to the point that you start to lose line of sight, meaning the curvature of the earth starts to dip away. These two radios hypothetically should be able to transmit with each other. It's even more effective if we can raise these guys up 20 feet, maybe 50 feet. So if you had a platform at 20 feet and these were both on there and they were completely, again, nothing in between them, just, just, I don't know, a concrete slab for miles and miles and miles, then technically they'd be able to transmit. So why do I say three miles then? Three miles. Well, it's because we generally don't have a three mile straight run of space where these guys are going to communicate just in open air. There's going to be vegetation. There's going to be buildings. There's going to be all kinds of other stuff that gets in the way of these guys transmitting. Because what does that stuff do? Well, it absorbs the RF that's being transmitted from these radios. Case in point, the two meter band or the you know 144 megahertz-ish area for amateur radio operators, those frequencies get absorbed very easily by buildings and sometimes vegetation. We like to use that frequency, that band, when we've got a bit opener spaces and we can do really well talking back and forth. 70 centimeters, on the other hand, is, is pretty good at working within buildings, actually. I can use this radio on 70 centimeters, and I can talk through it, and I can go through buildings in some cases, going all the way to hit repeaters, those big radio stations that are on mountains, and be able to communicate effectively that way. Yeah, those radio stations are more than three miles away. I'll talk about that, too. But that's kind of the idea with that. So, but Josh, if I go buy a $350 radio, isn't going to perform better than my $20 radio? Well, in terms of distance, not really. This radio, this Yesu FT5DR is going to have better audio quality. It's going to sound better when you're transmitting from it and likely even the audio coming out of the Baofeng and being received by this radio is going to be it's going to sound better on the other end. This is the Yesu FT5DR testing high power high power Kilo India 6 in November Alpha Zulu. Time is 4:57 p.m. Let's do that speaker test. So you're hearing the audio coming out of this full blast. Okay, 
at Los Angeles Civic Center. It was sunny with a temperature of 68. But just because of the practical capabilities of RF, the only thing that's really going to separate these two is that longer antenna that I'm running on the Yaesu. But practicality-wise, they're still putting out about the same power output, and they're still working on the fundamental principle of modulating radio frequency waves and sending them over the air. So they're going to operate at about the same distance. It's just the specs and features that give this one a, an improvement over the humble Baofeng. So what about mobile radios, right? These are the radios that go in your car. You attach a coax line to the back and you have a vertical antenna, likely something that's either a mag mount on the back of your vehicle or it's got a permanent fix mount. Here's our next test, Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu on the Compaq antenna. This is on 146.450. This is two meters at 2.52 p.m. Well, how far do mobile radios go with their 50 watt output? That's like 10 times that of a humble handheld. Well, again, it's going to depend on where you put the mobile, where the antenna is, and you know, where you happen to be driving and what frequency you're using. Two meters, 70 centimeters, right? The same thing could be the case. So if you're in the middle of downtown, I don't know, LA, surrounded by buildings, not far. If you're on top of a mountain, literally like a hill and you're not really surrounded by anything, uh, you can do 100 miles, no problem. Uh, realistically, you're probably gonna give about 20 to 50 miles. If you're trying to talk simplex, so that's like your buddy, right talking to you in another radio that's going to vary significantly it's going to be a, dependent on what's between you now if we're talking about repeaters what are repeaters repeaters are those radio stations that are on top of mountains the reason why you can transmit even from a handheld to a repeater is because they're on top of mountains. Your line of sight from the ground is unobstructed all the way up to that repeater, which makes it really convenient for having a radio station on there and being able to communicate. So with a mobile radio in a vehicle, you can communicate to repeaters from 60 up to 100 miles away in some cases, and I've definitely done that. Now to really have some fun with amateur radio, I need you to understand lower frequencies, but what we call high frequencies. If you consider very high frequencies, we just talked about two meters and 70 centimeters, ultra high frequency. If we take the V and the U, we're just left with high frequency. High frequency is pretty much everything below 30 megahertz or so. HF, as we like to call it, high frequency radio uh, will refract, bend off the atmosphere. The atmosphere is made up by multiple layers that you can not really see, in some cases you can, but that's a kind of a moot point. But they, uh, they change the layers, their intensity, their thickness, or their um, just charge, if you will, changes depending on the time of day. And it is the direct effect of the sun which causes some of the atmospheric layers to become transparent or basically not energized and others to become more active and the height of those layers varies pretty significantly the higher end of the high frequency band space is going to behave or work better generally during the daytime the lower frequencies are going to work better at nighttime and what does that allow us to do well depending on the time of day we can pick an appropriate band and we can use it to transmit our signals into the atmosphere bend it back down to earth and give us beyond line of sight communication. Let me explain that a different way. When we transmit with this handheld radio, the RF is going to go in all directions, except for out the top. That's actually a null. There, it's gonna go perpendicularly out from the sides of this vertical antenna, and it's gonna come out in all kinds of different directions, and it's gonna be chaotic and kind of just be everywhere, all over the place. Well, one of those things that these frequencies run into eventually is our atmosphere. They can just keep going out in a direction and eventually hit our atmosphere. Most RF is absorbed by the atmosphere and just done. Well, some of these, the, this RF that comes out of this radio will actually pierce through our atmosphere and go right out into space. That is why satellite communication largely uses VHF, two meters, right? And higher frequencies because those radio frequencies will consistently pop through the atmosphere 
and you can use it to make satellite contacts. So it's what we use for satellite radio, for anything basically that, that communicates to a satellite is going to be VHF or higher frequency. Whiskey 5, India Tango Romeo, Echo Mike 64, roving. Echo Mike 94, QSL, thanks for the contact. 7-3. That's it. That's it. Got into the trees. You did it. Nicely done. Got Was that three contacts? Yeah. Nice. Very good. So HF has a different problem. It can't pierce through the atmosphere. So we don't use it for communicating to satellites. But that means that it's actually really, really good for terrestrial communications, which is part of the reason why your AM radio stations that you probably hear at nighttime really well, those are really low frequencies. They're down in the kilohertz space. Depending on the time of day, depending on what radio you're using, if it is HF, we're going to have different bands of opportunities, different bands that we can use to transmit on. I personally like to use the 20 meter band during the day and the 40 meter band at night. Those are most easy to represent 20 meters is close to 14.225 megahertz. That puts you kind of right in the middle of the band. And 40 meters, the middle-ish of the amateur radio band for that is going to be about 7.175 megahertz. Yeah, the frequencies actually get lower as you go higher in the meters. So what does that mean? Well, it means I need a longer antenna the lower in frequency I go. Is this all making sense? I hope I have some pictures to give you uh, an idea of how long you might need an antenna to get out on 40 meters or 20 meters, for instance. Coax up to the matching box right there, which I'm using this line that I threw into the tree. Chloe's dragging me around the yard. Chloe, oh, stop. <laughs> Come on. And we got it hooked up. Running across the yard. And that comes to the loading coil, or I'm pretty sure that's a loading coil. And goes to a dog bone insulator which goes to the tree, which I tied a simple knot to keep it all tensioned up, running across, and we'll be running out of the Ford there. Yes. So test it out. If you're just rolling around town and you got a buddy that's on the other side of town, see if you can make a contact with them. Note the distance at time and then start changing the variables. Throw a different antenna on it. Maybe go to an area that mm, clearer shot, maybe like down Main Street, clearer shot, less trees, less buildings, potentially between you and your buddy, or swap up to a mobile. Same distance, but all we've done is we've added 50 watts. What are you going to find? Generally, zero to three miles on a handheld. I could even, I'm willing to go up to five miles just between you and me. You get an extra two. These can do about five miles of, uh, of distance. The reality though is that this question is incredibly difficult to answer and I hope I didn't lose you all in this whole journey we've been taking in talking about the many different and interesting areas of radio. If you want my two cents, it's always going to be swap the antenna. Get the antenna or the radio as high as you can and if you must get that signal out, use an antenna with some gain. So like a Yagi, something that you might use to communicate to a satellite, well, you can just point that down in the direction you want it to go and you're gonna focus that RF more in that direction. So it, it turns your handheld into pretty dang near close, a mobile radio with enough gain behind it. So those are gonna be my tips. I hope this was helpful and I really want to hear your comments below because it's likely I'm gonna get this question asked by many of you in the future and I'm just gonna send you this video link and I wanna know if it helped answer your questions. I'm Josh KI6NAZ, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later, 73. Is that banging coming through right now? Somebody outside banging?